Hello, and welcome to how to complete the Education Abroad Financial Estimate Worksheet. The Education Abroad Financial Estimate Worksheet is for students that are planning on using aid for their study abroad experience. Aid can be scholarships, financial aid, grants, state and or federal benefits, etc. Complete this worksheet to determine the estimated amount of aid that will be available to you for your study abroad term. Please allow three weeks for this form to be processed. You will receive an estimated aid amount once all departments have completed their review. Note, estimated funds as determined by this worksheet will be dispersed at the routine disbursement dates determined by the Office of Student Accounts. Please keep in mind that estimated funds are an estimate. Situations can change. If you change your program or your program's location or the amount of credits you're taking, the cost of your program might change and the amount of aid might change as well. So please keep that in mind when filling out this form. If you ever have a question on whether or not your situation has changed, please reach out to your education abroad advisor. They might ask you to complete the form again in the event that your program information has changed. So how do you complete this form? You start by putting in your CWID. You select your college. You select your term abroad. And then of course the year you plan on studying abroad. So for instance, if I'm going abroad this summer, 2024, then I would put that information into my financial estimate worksheet. The worksheet only works by term and year. If you're doing multiple summer terms, you still only select summer. So if I'm doing May interim, summer one, summer two, I would still just select summer 2024. Then once you click get started, your information will load. This is our test student norm. Um, and you will be able to see that he now has access to come down here to add information about his study abroad program. Once you click add, a pop-up on the right-hand side of the screen will come up, which will allow you to type in your study abroad program name. So here I'm going to type um, UA in Italy, Food and Wine, which is a faculty-led program that we have during the summer term. And I'm going to say that this program is three credit hours, because that's how many credit hours that faculty-led program completes during the summer term. The program type is a faculty-led. Typically, if it says UAN, it's a faculty-led program. If you're going abroad with a UA professor, then it's a faculty-led program. There are other program types such as affiliate, direct enroll, exchange, and non-affiliate. Please select the appropriate program type. If you do not know your program type, please reach out to your education abroad advisor so they can answer that question for you and help you get on track to filling out this form correctly. So I'm then going to click create, which is going to add an entire line about that specific program. Now, if I'm doing more than one program in the summer of 2024, I'm going to click add again. So sorry, I did that a little fast. <laughs> so I'm going to do it one more time. But I'm going to click add again under study abroad program to add my second program. So for this program, I'm going to do CIS abroad in London. Let me add the in. Through an affiliate provider, CIS abroad. It's also in summer 2024, because again, that's going to auto-populate from your initial typing of the form. On this program, I'm actually going to be taking six credit hours, so I had to put that in there, because it's a month-long program that offers six credit hours. And the program type is an affiliate program. So that is a second program that I'll be doing in the summer. It's still in the summer term, but I only need one financial estimate worksheet. Click create. It will then add both programs to my financial estimate worksheet. 
I can then scroll down and answer this next question. Are you taking any courses on campus or virtually through the University of Alabama during your term abroad? If so, click yes and type the amount of hours you might be taking. I'm just gonna do an example and put one. If you're not planning on taking any courses on campus or virtually through the University of Alabama during this specific term abroad, then you can just click no. And again, the term we're talking about right now is summer 2024. So let's say I'm going to take a one hour on campus course during summer two or May interim that doesn't interfere with my UA in Italy food and wine program or my CIS abroad in London, then I would put that information down here. Um, if you're taking it online and it does happen at the same time, please still include it, but you need to let us know if you're taking any courses on campus or virtually because that can impact your aid. So next, you'll let us know what type of aid are you planning on using for study abroad? And you'll need to check all that apply. So are you using financial aid? Are you using PAT, federal GI benefits through the VMA? Um, if you click on this little, or hover over this little blue dot, it'll talk about what different benefits exist, chapter 33, chapter 35, and GAP, et cetera. So if you don't know if you receive federal GI benefits or Alabama state GI benefits, um, I would reach out to the VMA office to confirm. Undergraduate scholarships. So these are any kind of scholarship you receive as an incoming undergraduate. So that is presidential, national merit, um, UA scholar. Those would all qualify as undergraduate scholarships. If you're planning on using the faculty staff tuition grant, so if your um, parent or guardian is a faculty or staff member on campus and you're able to use their tuition grant, you would click here. And if there's other aid that you're planning on using that isn't listed in this list, you would click other. All right, so we're gonna say we're using financial aid for now um, and just go from there. All right, next we're gonna move on to supporting documentation. Because you have selected a faculty-led program, you must attach a summarized cost and payment sheet that is found in your study abroad application. You'll come over here and click add, click here to attach a file, go to your homepage, find the downloaded um, summarized cost and payment sheet, click Italy food and wine for our example, Click open and it will add the summarized cost of payment sheet that you've attached to your documents. Because in this example, we are also doing an affiliate program, we should also upload some supporting um, budgets that explain why our budget for our affiliate program might be that cost. So any kind of supporting documentation. So we're gonna add a, another file and we're gonna click CIS Abroad Summers program fees. And I just got this off of our affiliate provider, CIS Abroad's website, which is their estimated budget for this program. So I'm gonna update their program fees here in the supporting documentation. Once you click off, it'll show they're both uploaded. It'll give you a count of two documents, and then you know you've uploaded your supporting documentation. At the very bottom of the program, if you're doing any program except faculty-led, you'll have to complete a detailed budget. Why except faculty-led? In the faculty-led programs, there will be an Italy food and wine specific budget already detailed in your summarized cost and payment sheet. For all other programs, you will have to add a budget. So you'll see right here, it pulls down CIS Abroad in London's budget and you have not completed it. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna click open budget. And it's going to open a budget where we put in the amount of this specific program. So I'm just gonna give some examples from that CIS Abroad budget sheet. You're gonna pull all your information directly from there. So the tuition for two courses through CIS Abroad for one month is about $4,090. The program fee is about $350 through CIS Abroad. The accommodations are about $1,800 for a month accommodations. And then the meals are approximate budget of $600 in London. 
London is a pretty pricey city, so these are pretty on par for a whole month in London. Our CIP study abroad fee, um, if you hover over this little blue dot, it will show you what our study abroad fee is. Our study abroad fee for University of Alabama students is $200. So that is added right there. And then I'll just show you insurance. So depending on the term and type of program you're doing abroad, your insurance might change. So for an affiliate program over the summer, the cost is $55. So a month long program is about $55 in insurance, which is a pretty good deal for international insurance coverage. Then there are the not, so these are the billable costs. These are the main program costs for um, when you think of how much do I need to pay my program? What is my program going to cost me out of pocket? This is what you're going to be thinking of. This is going to be pretty standard for most students. And the non billable costs are all those what ifs, all the Ooh, I might need a passport or I might already have my passport, but let's assume I don't and I need to purchase my first passport. Or maybe you need a visa for your program. Most short-term programs aren't going to need a visa, so I'm just going to put zero for now. But if you do need a visa, you should include that cost. Airfare to London, typically not too bad from the East Coast, but if you're flying over from the West Coast, it might be a little higher. I'm going to do $900 round trip airfare to London. Textbooks and supplies. Most of the time, textbooks abroad are not as expensive as textbooks here. I definitely recommend reaching out to your provider or your institution to find out more, um, but I'm gonna do a $200 budget for textbooks and supplies. Gifts and souvenirs. We want you to think about this number, but that doesn't mean it's actually included in your official budget sheet for financial aid, so just keep that in mind. Um, this is just an estimate that you might spend while you're abroad. So I'm gonna give you $100 for gifts and souvenirs excuse me, gifts and souvenirs. Cell phone, that will depend on the student. I'm gonna budget high and assume you're not gonna get a new cell phone plan for your time abroad. And you're just gonna do the $10 a month plan through your provider that you currently have. So we're gonna budget high on the high end at $300, but you might be able to for, find a more cost efficient way of getting a cell phone abroad. Transportation. So definitely hover over that when you're reading it. This is talking about local transportation. So this is going to class. This is going to anywhere you're required to be, taking the bus, the tram in your main city. So we're going to do in London about a $200 budget for the month of transportation in London. So that's taking the underground and buses, etc. Spending money. Spending money is like toiletries, snacks, laundry, things you need to spend money on for day-to-day -day life while you're abroad. So we're going to do about a $400 budget for spending money. And then travel money. Again, might not be included in your budget sheet for financial aid or something that they're willing to cover, but something you still want to budget and put in and include in your budget. So for travel money, that's going to be about we'll say $400 for weekend trips and excursions or just nice out to eat restaurants. If there's some type of other, um, please type it here, but you will also want to include it in the comments below when you finish your budget sheet to let us know why you're adding an other section and how that's valid for your specific budget. So we're going to click create and that's going to create our budget. And the red goes to green, and we know that we are completing our budget. So here's where you would add the comments. Hey, I needed to include an other section in my budget so that I could mention that I will Let's say, what could we be other expenses? Have to purchase a camera for a class. That might be a unique circumstance that you might be taking a photography or iPhoneography class abroad and you might need a camera for that class. So I'm gonna click submit and you've successfully submitted your budget sheet. So congratulations, it'll take you back to our main page of our website, um, and it will take again up to three weeks to go through all of the processes to know that it's been approved by the different departments, depending on how many you click. It could be as short as three to five days, business days, or it could take up to the three weeks. So just make sure to give it time for it to process.
If you have any questions, feel free to email studyabroad at ua.edu. We'd be happy to help you. Have a good day. Thank you.